In this video, we're going to look at some properties of triple integrals. So sometimes you have a solid E, like a box or even a tetrahedron, uh, which can be viewed as all three types. It can be viewed as having a top and a bottom. It could be viewed as having a left surface and a right surface, or viewed as having a front surface and a back surface. And in this case, um, we may also have the situation where the projection onto the coordinate planes can be viewed as both type 1 and type 2, as a type 2 region and a type 1 region. And so in this case, we're going to get six possible orders of integration. We may have uh, dx, then dy, then dz, dx, then dz, dy, because the region D is both type 1 and type 2. Uh, we could have dy, then dx, dz, dy, and then dz, dx. We could have dz, then dx, dy, and dz, followed by dy, dx. So let's look at an example. Here, we don't know the integram. We're not asked to find the value of the integral. All we're asked to do is write an iterated integral in six different ways that could be used, potentially, to evaluate uh, this particular integral. E is going to be the solid, which is enclosed by the cylinder, y squared plus z squared equals 9, and the planes x equals negative 2 and x equals 2. So this is a closed cylinder and it's centered on the x-axis. So I didn't draw the uh, ends again to kind of keep the diagram a little bit clear, but it's capped off at the bottom, and the, I mean the front and the rear. At x equals 2 and x equals negative 2, this cylinder is closed. But what I'm going to do is start off by thinking of this uh, solid as having a top surface which would be the half cylinder, z equals radical 9 minus y squared, and the bottom half cylinder, which would be z equals negative 9 minus y squared. And so the projection then onto the xy plane is this yellow rectangle, which in the y direction goes from negative 3 to 3, and the x direction goes from negative 2 to 2. So my innermost integral would be uh, with respect to z and its upper and lower bounds have to be my top surface and bottom surface. And now I have two choices, whether I'm going to have a dy dx with a double integral or dx dy. If I do dy dx, I mean, it is a rectangle, so I just have to make sure I match up my bounds and the dx matches with the x bounds. And then I could keep the same inner integral and reverse the bounds on the double integral. So now I'll go do it dx dy. And there's no thought involved here because the bounds are constants. I just make sure that they correspond. It, the second integral has to have bounds corresponding to x, and the outermost should correspond to y. All right, same solid. And now we want to think of it as having a left surface and a right surface. This is my right surface. This is my left surface. So the right surface is the half cylinder radical 9 minus z squared. And then the left surface would be the y equals negative radical 9 minus z squared. So we'll, yeah, when we go left and right, y is being bound by those surfaces. So y is going to be the innermost integral. Our projection then onto the 
uh, xz plane, again, is a rectangle. So we're going to have constant bounds. So for our double integral, we'll have uh, freedom to choose either dz dx or dx dz. But the inner one has to be dy with lower bound being the left and the upper bound being the right surface. And then if I put dz in the middle, z is going between negative 3 and 3. So I have the corresponding bounds. And the bounds for x are from negative 2 to 2. So I can keep y as the inner integral and just switch the outer bounds because they're constants. And remember to switch the bounds of uh, integration here when I change the order. So then the last pair would be to look at this cylinder as having a front surface and a back surface. So now I've gone ahead and tried to color in the front disc in yellow and the rear disc in orange. The front surface really is the plane, just x equals 2, and the rear surface is x equals negative 2. Now the projection onto the yz plane is this circle uh, with the radius 3, and so I'm going to have to do more work with my double integral. I could think of this as being a type 1 region where I have a top semicircle and a bottom semicircle, or I could also think of it as having a right semicircle and a left semicircle. So my innermost integral with respect to x has constant bounds from negative 2 to positive 2. But now if I think of this as having a top semicircle and a bottom semicircle, that means I'd be solving, oh, this is not, I've solved for y, which means I must be thinking of this as having a right semicircle and a left semicircle. The right semicircle would be y equals 9 minus z squared, the radical of that. And the left semicircle would be y equals negative radical 9 minus z squared. And then my z values go from negative 3 to positive 3. Now, if I put z in the middle, my top curve is this top semicircle, z equals radical 9 minus y squared, and the bottom curve is z equals negative radical 9 minus y squared. And then y in this case goes from negative 3 to positive 3. So let's find the volume of a solid. Just like if I put the integrand as a 1 with a double integral, I get the area of the domain of integration. If I put the integrand as 1 over a triple integral, I'm going to get the volume of that solid, which represents the domain of, the, of integration. So you really have to focus uh, with triple integrals because um, you get carried away with this idea of volume, but it's only true when the integrand is 1. So let's work out an example. Let's use a triple integral. You don't have to use a triple integral, but let's use a triple integral to find the volume of the solid enclosed by these two paraboloids. Now, these paraboloids are uh, centered on the y-axis. One opens upward, and the other one opens, well, not downward. One opens to the right, and the other one opens to the left. So you'll get this shape 
right here. We're going to try to find the volume of this using a triple integral. So our right surface is the paraboloid that opens to the left. And the left surface is the one that is, has its vertex there at the origin. What will be our projection? Well, I need to find the equation where these two meet. So I'll set them equal to each other. So I'll have 8 minus x squared minus z squared equals x squared plus z squared. And do some algebra. And that tells me that I'll get this circle x squared plus z squared equals 4. And so my projection on the xc plane is just that disk. It's going to be a circle centered at the origin with radius 2. So to find the volume, I'm going to have my middle integral, or innermost integral, sorry, innermost integral uh, with respect to y, with lower and upper bounds being the left and right surfaces, respectively. And here's a case where I want to, after I perform the antiderivative, uh, I look at this and I, whenever I have my domain of integration being a disk or a polar region, I want to consider polar coordinates. And I look at this integrand and it looks like polar coordinates are going to work out fine for us. Uh, I just got to keep straight that I'm going to use x to be r cosine theta and z equals r sine theta. So then x squared plus uh, z squared will give me r squared. So when I make that substitution, I'll get 8 minus 2 r squared as in, inside the integrand. Uh, my r value, remember the radius is 2, so it's going to go from 0 to 2. And I'll go all the way around the circle, so 0 to 2 pi. And then dA is r dr d theta. So multiply out the r and take the antiderivative with respect to r. Let's evaluate that between 0 and 2. And then uh, I'll just evaluate the I took a little shortcut here, because I know there's no theta involved here. So that'll just yield a constant, which I'll multiply times 2 pi minus 0, which is just 2 pi. So the volume of that is 16 pi. Now, you may say, hey, there's a lot of symmetry here. The, really, this has a top half and a bottom half. They have the same volume, and that is true. So you could have calculated the volume of half of this, maybe use the top surface where they meet. Uh, they meet uh, at, at, in the middle, so where uh, y equals 4, and uh, then find the volume of the bottom half. I'm saying bottom, but really I mean the left half. Find the volume of the left half, multiply it by 2.